Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to Newbrit Workshop. We're looking at cutters to go in the CNC machine today, and I've got a variety to show you. They're kindly provided by Writer Cutter UK, and they're all made by the Whiteside Machine Company of the United States. Now, I've got two sets to show you. The first is the CNC starter set number 705, and that consists of five cutters. There's a 1 16th of an inch ball conical, a 1 8th of an inch ball conical, a quarter inch spiral upcut, a 90 degree V cutter, and a 60 degree V cutter. Now the second set is the CNC carving set, and this has got an 8th of an inch ball conical, 3 16th of an inch ball conical, and also a quarter inch ball. Now, in my previous video, I said that I would uh, do some chip load calculations. Uh, I've got installed a, a quarter inch uh, upcut uh, two fluted cutter, um, and Whiteside have very kindly sent me a whole bunch of chip load figures for their various cutters. And, and to be honest, unless I've made some dreadful mistake, which maybe I have, my maths might not be so good. Um, I cannot see that the X-carve can actually push uh, that uh, spiral uh, upcut cutter from white side uh, to its limit in any way at all. So realistically for the X-carve you should be running your spindle fairly slowly if you've got the DeWalt uh, like me uh, around about speed setting one or two. So, and if you keep your uh, amount of cut, if you're doing a, a straight uh, channel or groove, uh, no more uh, than half the diameter for the depth. Uh, and if you're doing uh, a, a facing cut, then uh, the amount that you're taking off at one time should not be any more than the diameter times the radius. Uh, those are actually the same rule. So what I've decided to do is to give you an idea of how cleanly um, a spiral upcut cutter uh, can cut some veneered MDF. And I've got a piece of walnut veneered MDF. It's veneered on both sides. And I'm going to cut three circles. Uh, the first circle is going to be a Klein cut uh, because that theoretically should give a better cutout uh, at the top surface. Uh, the second circle is going to be a conventional cut and both of those two are only going down about five or six millimetres into the material. And finally I'll be cutting a third circle uh, which will go all the way through the material um, and I'll have to leave a couple of tabs so that the middle piece doesn't break away and cause any problems. Uh, but we will be able to examine uh, the quality of the cut both on the top veneered surface and on the bottom veneered surface. Uh, this is the first circle being done. Uh, this is the clone cut. And the second one is the conventional cut. You notice it's going round in the uh, different direction. And these circles have a diameter of 70 millimetres. And this final one is uh, all the way through and it's a climb cut. That's it. Job done. A little bit of dust in the hole. In there. Now here we have the results. Um, unfortunately when I picked this up I broke uh, this uh, circle out because uh, it was only held in uh, by the veneer. Now this was a climb cut at the end here. This first one was a climb cut. Uh, now uh, it's noticeable that the outer uh, quality here, which is probably the one we're, we would be after, is better with the climb cut uh, compared to the uh, conventional cut. Uh, and there's another climb cut there. Uh, and underneath here uh, the uh, breakout is absolutely minimal, so uh, that's pretty good. Now, what I'm going to do now uh, is just give this a very light sand across here, uh, because you would be sanding something like this after you've uh, operated on it, and I suspect that each one of these three uh, will be perfectly okay. <laughs> Well, there we go, um, and uh, to be honest with you, I, I would be perfectly happy uh, with all 
three of those. Uh, this one here, which is uh, probably easier to see, is absolutely perfect. Uh, and that's what we have here. Uh, now, as far as the quality of the inner piece goes, this is the piece that theoretically in this experiment I don't want, but uh, maybe one might be doing this in order to make little circles like this for, for use. Uh, the conventional cut has left a very slightly better finish uh, when one wants the inner part of the circle. And there you can see all three of those and the reverse side of that uh, hole we cut out. So I'm very pleased with that. I think that's an excellent job. Well, here's my first effort at a bit of artwork uh, using the quarter-inch uh, spiral upcut around here to make this uh, little border. I then used the 90-degree uh, V-cut uh, to do this detail here of the Gothic window. And I then used the eighth of an inch bore conical uh, to do this bit of textured detail. And uh, I'm very pleased with that. Well, I'm going to have a bit of fun now. Uh, I'm going to do a nameplate and I'm going to be using uh, the 90 degree uh, V cutter and also the eighth of an inch conical cutter. And I think you'll be surprised by what comes out. Now I've just taken this uh, 90 degree uh, V cutter out and uh, it's literally only been stopped for uh, less than a minute and it's quite cool, it's not overheating and so the parameters that I set for that I'm quite happy with. I've now put the eighth of an inch um, conical cutter in. There we go, that's in place. So I'm ready to load my file and do my cut. So ear defenders on. And this cut has been working quite hard uh, doing this. Uh, it's having absolutely no problem at all. And there we go, that's it, another job done. And just like the uh, V bit, I've taken this uh, eighth of an inch uh, conical uh, round over bit out and uh, it's within a minute of it doing all that work, I'm handling it, it's not overheated and it looks just as good as it was when I put it in. And there that is, all I need to do is a a little bit of trim of the wood and a little bit of finish on that and it'll be good. Well that's that uh, finished piece, I'm rather pleased with that. Uh, I used the 90 degree V cutter around the outside and for the uh, name here and then I used the 1 8 conical bit uh, to do the fish. Now in order to create this I used VCarve Pro and the file took me about five minutes to create and then another couple of minutes uh, to do the tool paths. This fish is just one of the many items of clip art that are available in VCarve Pro. Uh, and the rest of it was really, really easy. And you can see that effect. I think that's really, really good. And for my final uh, demonstration, I'm going to be using this 1 16th of an inch ball conical from the CNC a starter set. Right, I've loaded the file, everything's set up, uh, everything's locked down as it should be. Well, that's complete. Uh, I don't know if you're able to notice just how little dust there is uh, around the periphery of the job. Uh, I'm really pleased. I, I lowered the dust boot down just a little bit more than I'd done before. I'm really pleased with that. And just like before, I've taken this bit out uh, as quickly as I could, uh, and uh, that's not hot at all. It's now just to do a bit of tidying up on the outside. Well, there that uh, 
is. So I'll just uh, trim the, these off uh, by hand um, and uh, give it a sand and then just see if it needs any more uh, little bits and pieces doing to make it presentable. Now I'm pretty pleased with that but uh, I did have to do a little bit of cleaning up. Now for such a, a fine cutter I had the spindle speed a little bit too low so I was getting a little bit of uh, chip out uh, from some of the parts of the rope uh, as it was going down the two long sides. Uh, it was only a tiny bit and rather than going in there with sandpaper I got my little Dremel out uh, and it's got this sort of wire brush end here and I just went in there uh, and did it with that and that's cured it. The other thing to watch is don't make the mistake I made. Uh, I then sanded it and <laughs> managed to sand uh, the top of my rope a little bit flat in places. So a couple of precautions. And I've just put one coat of Osmo top oil on that. Uh, it's designed for use in kitchens, it's uh, food safe and uh, I'll put a second coat on uh, once this one's dry. I'm really pleased with that. Excellent. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to give this away. <laughs> really like that. Now I must say I'm really pleased with all of this. Now if you're only going to get just one set I would recommend you go for the starter set because it's got the five cutters. It's got the two uh, V cutters which are absolutely essential to have a V cutter if you want to do nice uh, lettering like that. Uh, it's got the uh, straight uh, up cut uh, cutter here. Uh, you're going to need one of those for almost every project you, you tackle and it's got these two uh, conical, uh, the eighth of an inch and the sixteenth of an inch. Uh, they're absolutely super. Now, well, I used the sixteenth of an inch round here and I didn't have the writer spindle speed quite as high as I should have done. Uh, and so that gave me a little bit of problems just tidying up in places. But that's a lesson I've learnt uh, now. And the other set, uh, the ball nose set of course, uh, well you would certainly need to get some other cutters uh, to give you a general capability. But that's all uh, worked out really nicely. Oh, one other tip. Um, when you've finished something like this fish, indeed even the lettering and even this, I've got this plastic, uh, it's fairly stiff plastic brush here, uh, and I've gone in there and given it a really good go with the plastic brush just to get any little um, stuck fibres of wood out of the way. Uh, I've not sanded this fish in any way, uh, and you know that uh, this scroll here, I just used the little wire brush in my uh, little Dremel machine. So there we go. And now I've got one confession uh, and that is uh, you may or may not have noticed uh, that this background here um, finished there and it should have gone everywhere. Well at the time that I was filming this uh, a very big helicopter uh, came very slowly uh, and hovered over my house. Uh, and at the time I had my ear defenders on because I was doing this but all I could feel was the vibration and for some reason I thought gosh there's something terrible going on here so I switched everything off and that's where it stopped and then the helicopter flew away I didn't get his license plate but never mind so there we go that's it so thank you very much for watching take care bye bye